Sister, I have some cheese man for you. Oh, you know I love some good cheese man. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, it's not a drill. People are dying around the country because of a stereotainted cheeses. If you ask me, this is no Gouda. Oh. Do you know what Asteria is? No. Well, uh, tell beautiful. me, brother. I, I had to Google it, too. Okay. Um, Asteria's symptoms include nausea, vomiting, chorro. Oh. Uh, it can also affect pregnant women and, and their unborn babies. Oh, my so, God. again, this is not nothing to joke about. No, for and sure. And if it's not treated in time, it can even cause death. Dang, damn, brother. Como que, como que eso no me gusta. Mm. Uh, so, if you have cheese from these brands... Throw it away. Their products are not safe to eat at this time. But yeah, it's crazy because this hasn't. This is not something like completely brand new. This has happened in the in the past. This really? happened in the eighties. Yeah, and specifically, Jalisco Mexican products was being the one blamed for this. And oh. they were, you know, oh, it's the Mexican cheese. It's the Mexicans. Oh. However, that was not the case. It was the American distributors responsible See? for the outbreak. See. And so these American distributors include brands such as Knudsen, Marigold, and Jersey Made, just to name a few. Damn, I have Knudsen uh, sour cream. No, yeah, same. That's it's like the, the blue and yellow cream. one, right? Yeah, yeah. With no wonder I felt kind of queasy. Oh, good. Maybe it's just <laughs> no gas. No wonder que me dio chorro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you fed a believe that we have a pro to talk about, about these cheeses. <laughs> uh, we have nice. Carlo Yescas, cheese industry trailblazer, an advocate for responsible business practices and food politics. The queso king, if you will. King queso, I like to call him. Yeah. But that's okay. Let's bring him in. Hey, I like that. <laughs> hey, Carlos, what's Carlos. up? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for that introduction. <laughs> Do people call you king queso or is it just me? I have never been called that. I'm, <laughs> I'm very happy to be that. For you. Well, there you go. I You're welcome. It. But thank you it. for taking the time. Yes. How did you become a cheese expert? It's a, kind of a long story. I'm originally from Mexico. My dad used to work for the government, and one of the jobs he had was he worked for an organization or for a government branch called Reforma Agraria, and he would travel to around Mexico and basically give the titles of the lands or the people that actually live in the lands. As you can imagine, he will arrive in these places, in these towns, and People will be very grateful that he was doing this, not himself, but you know, the government. Yeah. And they will give him things from their production. And so sometimes he will come back with, you know, 10 pineapples or a crate of tomatoes. And in one of these two trips, he went to Chihuahua and came back with a 15 wheel uh, of queso Chihuahua. And, you know, gave it to me and my sister. And we were like, this is weird. Uh, <laughs> you know, like it turns out that, you know, I've behind a cheese there's a cow and a cheese makers and there's a whole story and so can cheese has been um in our lives for a long time until one day i said you know i really like cheese maybe let's try to um start selling it so me and my sister started a business in mexico everything just to come from there i'm a cheese judge uh at the world cheese awards and um cool. yeah it's a cheesy life a cheesy <laughs> life. You, you're getting in there with the puns too. I mean, that, <laughs> Carlos jokes. That all sounds good to me. Honestly, <laughs> so, yeah. um, so Carlos, how is how is queso fresco made? All cheese is kind of starts the same way, right? Like you have the milk, you put it in a bath or a, a, a bucket, uh, and you put rennet in it. So rennet can come from either the stomach of an animal, so that's animal rennet, as a traditional rennet. Or it could also now come from a bacteria that is used to um, create an enzymatic process so that the milk coagulates and becomes a gel. Um, and then you cut that curd, uh, which is kind of a gel, like a gelatin, and expel some of the water. So that water is whey. Um, and that's where lactose is. And so this is sort of the basics of all cheeses. And then queso fresco, for example, once you have cut the curd, you mill that curd, you, you sort of break it up and, you know, um, and then you put it in these little rounds and that is queso fresco. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. That is not your average That's process. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it, it sounds like. That's a whole process. Yeah. And actually, uh, you, said, you mentioned this bacteria. And again, depending, there's like different factors to all of this. Is there any dangers in cheese making? Like, how can we prevent contamination and getting sick from these uh, products? You know, we need bacteria for a lot of things, right? Like, we have more bacteria in our bodies than cells that, you know, sort of like, 
uh, human cells. Uh, we are basically a, a bacteria walking around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we have created, importantly, is that with the modern food systems that we have, um, some bacteria that are pathogenic to humans that make us sick thrive in certain conditions. And those certain conditions normally are very cold and very wet environments. So it's not so much that cheese is risky to make, it's just that the conditions in which we keep now cheese to you know, send it around the country and make sure that it's refrigerated all the way, kind of creates the perfect conditions that in the case that there were uh, bacteria to start with, those start multiplying and then you know, go and eat them and get really sick. And the problem with listeria is that it kills you. Um, and people who are immunocompromised or you know, young children or old, older people, um, people who are pregnant, will be uh, at a risk of that infection taking over and um, you know, killing them. What I think is interesting is that we always hear when it's cheese, but we never hear when it's lettuce. Um, and it actually, there's more listeria from sort of salads uh, that we buy in the bags. There is way more outbreaks of listeria from there than in cheese. But when it's cheese, it's like we feel like, oh my God, the primordial food that I love. How is my cheese killing me? We never <laughs> think of that. Of, you know, that is so nice. true. Well, thank you so much, Carlos. We really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise with us. And también, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me online. Just my name is Carlos Jescas. You'll find me on Instagram. I I put together tours for people to come visit cheese producers in Europe, and so they can come cool. and you know travel with me, learn all about cheese. And you know, I we also sell cheese in Mexico, and you can find us um, as Lactography. Thank you, Carlos. Awesome. Thank, well, you, thank you so much, much for the time. Cuídate. Thank Cuídate. you so much. Mucho gusto. Bye. <laughs> yep. Mm. What, you know what also that like, got my attention? How uh -huh. he called out lettuce. He's like, oh, don't, don't point the fingers at, at, yeah. at cheese only. Yeah, Look there's lettuce meat and lettuce on. too. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. Such that a good was, cheese mess session. That was. It was, it was, it was Gouda. Hey, <laughs> next story. Was, but wait, oh. it was Gouda. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, hey. <laughs>